Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,662. Today we're talking to a guy who, did he start as a car guy and turn into a builder? Or start as a builder and turn into a car guy? We'll find out. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and very excited to be talking to a gentleman from Moore Park, California today by the name of Kevin Barrett. Hey, Kevin, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Yes, sir. All right. We'll have some fun today. Hey, before I give you a proper introduction here, I want you to share one little thing with our listeners that maybe most people don't know about you, Kevin. Well, I'm not new to cars, but I'm new to the automotive storage business. Uh-huh. My uh, primary work activities involve high-end construction for both residential and commercial projects, primarily in the Arizona and greater Los Angeles area. Uh, I started my construction business, fair building company, when I was 18, and I'm still in business today and doing well. My construction business powers and funds my current endeavor in the automotive world. Well, it's very cool, and congratulations for being in business for as long as you have. That's quite kudos to you, especially for a guy who started it at a very young age. So that's awesome, and you definitely means for 20 years you've lived through some real estate ups and downs because they do happen. And I grew up in Southern California and the whole country goes through these things, but specifically color Southern California has, has those things. So that's cool. You know, I always pre-record a little uh, intro at the beginning here. And I, at my beginning, I said, is he a building guy that became a car guy or a car guy that became a builder? So we'll get into that a little bit more, but let me give you a proper introduction here, Kevin. Sure. Kevin Barrett is the founder of Barrett Automotive Group. And as he said, Barrett Building Company. Kevin has loved Loved cars since he was a kid, and he even customized a few when he was in high school. After completing a build of his own, he started a construction company, as he stated, that's been in business for over 20 years. His latest venture, though, is something new, Barrett Automotive Group, and it's his vision of what a real car storage facility should really be like. This facility he built is a place where cars are not only taken care of, but also a community in which anything with a motor is maintained, showcased, and enjoyed both as a work of art and as a driving, floating, or riding machine. From professional detailing services to exhilarating events, they add value to their members' experience of high-end car ownership in Southern California car culture. We'll be back in a minute to talk with Kevin, but first a word from our valued sponsors that make the show possible. So sit tight, and we'll be right back. Did you know the most damaging thing to your vehicle's interior is the sun. Those harsh UV rays damage your interior over time. They crack your dash, they fade the colors, and the heat makes getting into your favorite ride downright unbearable. My friends at Covercraft have the perfect solution for you. Their sunscreens are easy to use. They take seconds to install and remove and protect your vehicle while parked in the sun. They fold up easily and store away for those times you don't want to use your car cover. I have one for every one of my vehicles and you should too. They come in a variety of colors and options featuring an accordion design that makes unfolding and folding them a breeze. Want to give a gift that keeps on giving? Buy a Covercraft sunscreen for your family members and friends. They'll thank you for it every time they park their vehicle. They're custom made to fit almost any vehicle. Check out Covercraft.com for a huge number of styles, colors, and options. And here's something special from me here at Cars Yeah! just for you. Use the code ya 120 at checkout at Covercraft.com and you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order. Go to Covercraft.com and use the code YEAH120 at checkout and you get 10% off. You can thank me later. Covercraft, they've got you covered. Kevin Buckler is a winning racer and team owner of the Racers Group. He has over 100 professional wins, multiple wins at the 24-hour of Daytona and a win at Le Mans. Kevin realized the racing world is about the people and founded Adobe Road Winery. He and his team have created a winning combination with the Racing Series, four ultra-premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own with a racing twist. Just like in racing, these wines comprise of art, precision, engineering, science, superb taste, 
all blended together with a whole lot of fun. There are four carefully crafted blends with race-inspired names. Redline, Apex, Shift, and the 24. When you purchase all four, you get the entire lineup in a beautifully designed gift box. There's a printed description of the blends inside the box lid, and every bottle is parked in a protective die-cut placeholder. The bottles feature three-dimensional labels, and I promise you'll want to keep them after enjoying these delicious wines. The box is so cool, you'll want to keep it too. The Racing Series is a killer gift for the automotive enthusiasts in your life, and I have a deal for you. If you use the code CARSYEAH, all one word, all caps, at checkout, you'll get $10 off any purchase of wine from the Racing Series. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly. Use the code CARSYEAH at checkout for $10 off on your purchase today. There's always a seat at the table for excellence, with the Racing Series. Go to adoberoadwines.com and use the code CARSYAT today to get your deal. Cheers. All right, Kevin, we're back. Now, before we dive into this new facility you've built, and by the way, I've seen pictures. It is stunning. I'd love for you to share a success quote or a mantra, some kind of saying that maybe has been relative in your success in business and life, or maybe it relates to cars. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires spinning a little bit here on Cars Yeah. So Kevin, take the wheel. Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So more less of a quote, but more like some key words that I, I have lived by through the last 22 years. Or so um, they they go by uh, so relentless urgency and follow up, and I, I did not make these three words up. Actually, um, there's a gentleman, a developer, uh, a mentor by the name of Rick Caruso, uh, who is a big Southern California uh, land developer, mall owner. And when you go into his boardroom and and you meet with him and his and his executive board staff behind the head seat behind his head in big bold letters is these words, relentless urgency and follow up. And he values these traits highly. And by doing so has become one of the most successful people in our country, in my opinion. So how have you incorporated that concept? Great words, by the way, uh, no yeah. doubt. How have you incorporated that into your career and your life? Yes. So I've adopted those words. And so everything that I do and inspire to do is constantly following up. It's there's always urgency and relentless in what I do. So I, I, you know, I don't let people dictate what I do every day. I, I'm constantly at the driver's wheel, pushing my team, pushing my staff, pushing myself to always meet targets, meet deadlines, set high expectations for myself and my staff and my colleagues. It's paid off well in, in the construction business. And it's now something we typically use as well in the, in the car automotive business as well. You know, having mentors, having people that are successful is a key to success. Uh, I've said this and I've heard it from so many guests I've had on the show. Is a lot of times you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just look at what successful people do and emulate them. Put your touch on it, of course, and go forward. And you figured it out. I mean, it's great. And it's nice to have a relationship with somebody like that as well. You know, the building industry is fraught with ups and downs, and it's typically guided by economic ups and downs. And boy, this year, Talk about a weird one thrown at us. Let me ask you this. Uh, is Are you and everyone in your family and part of your team or all of your team been safe from COVID? Everybody okay? Uh, yes, for the most part. I mean, we we uh, early on followed the, you know, the CDC guidelines. So, I've you know, my, my family, my staff, you know, we constantly are following the protocols, wearing masks, washing our hands, things like that, keeping away from large crowds. Mm -hmm. So far, uh, fingers crossed. My family as well. My employees are well. My immediate family um, is doing well, and, and I hope to continue that way. Well, good. I'm happy to hear that. Let's talk about this somewhat of a new venture for you. You're obviously a, a pro, a longtime pro in the building industry, but the Barrett Automotive Group and this new facility is what brought you to Cars Yeah. Now, I've had a lot of people on the show that have facilities for cars and things, and they're everything from what we would call man caves or man condos, if you will. I don't know why they say mm -hmm. men, because there's lots of women that are into cars. Yeah. What you've done is you've taken it to a, a bit of a higher level from what I've seen. So talk to me about about first and foremost why did you build this venture uh, obviously it has to do with your passion for cars and then tell our listeners a lot more about it all the unique things that you've built into this very cool place for people to go hang out and store their vehicles okay great yeah so i bought this building in september of 2019 for purposes of expanding my construction business 
and then I came across a, a, a building that is what much more square footage than I, I needed. And I thought to myself, what could I use with this 20,000 square foot warehouse space? Cause if, if you come here and visit, you'll see in the front office, the front of house, we have offices where I have my construction business. And in the back, we have 20,000 square feet of storage uh, or warehouse. And, and I combined, you know, I thought, why can't I turn my passion for cars uh, into, you know, and utilize that into this, you know, existing 20,000 square foot space. So I had this idea of, you know, storing cars. And on top of that, we had this mezzanine above us, uh, which is another 4,000 square feet, where I thought, why can't we turn this into a really cool lounge? Yeah. So what I did over the, you know, the course of, say, three months um, with my team is we, 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 we polished the floor to an 800 grit high polish, kind of like something you'd see at Costco. We painted walls, we painted columns, we, we, we turned just a, a typical industrial warehouse space with open ceilings into a beautiful garage that is you know, temperature controlled, it's got surveillance, it's got security, sprinklers, um, we got TVs, we got projectors, you know, all the cool things that anybody would want to have in their, in their own personal garage, but we did it times 10. And, and then upstairs we have, we just finished out recently our, our members only lounge, which is a 4,000 square foot space where you can actually reserve a conference room and have a, a, a business meeting or have your, you know, your local car club meeting. Uh, we have a set of couches that you can hang out in. We have a full bar. Uh, it's, that's 24 feet long and it, it can hold, you know, 12, you know, 15 people comfortably around the bar, um, where we do catered events, things like that. And when you're in the, when you're in the mezzanine, you actually have windows looking down over the, the warehouse. So you can be upstairs having a cocktail, talking to friends and talking about the cars below. Um, so it's really quite a, a remarkable space. It's something that I'm really excited to really push forward in the near future, obviously with the coronavirus. It's put a little um, damper on, you know, really opening this place up to the, the whole outside world and having these big events. Right now, it's mostly focused on the storage um, business and detailing business because there's low volume of people coming in on in that particular side of it. Oh, it's fantastic. The pictures I've seen have been absolutely stunning. You did such a nice job. Obviously, that construction history and knowledge uh, gave you some wherewithal of how to create a really nice space, a nice facility, and more importantly, a safe place for people to store their their cars. And I love the concept that you did a bit of a pivot here. You took a big cavernous space and said, what are we going to do with that? And turned it into another business. So kudos to you for thinking. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Now, in the area that you're in, is this something that there are other places like that around or are you somewhat unique? Uh, good question. So, in the beginning, well, I, we're definitely not unique uh, in a sense of the concept. I mean, there's places all over the United States that have storage businesses with lounges and things like that. So, I don't want to take credit for the concept. But in our particular area, you know, the Ventura County area, um, which is a pretty large region, um, we, we are, I would say, one of the only type to this magnitude with, with the, high, the level of um, detail and concierge, detailing, membership lounge, definitely with in our, in our area. I mean, the closest thing to us at this time is probably more of like a, an ownership where you would own, there's a, there's a place called Finish Line actually here in Westlake. It's, it's limited to people that can actually afford to buy their own garage, yep. but there's a common um, area that has a similar lounge, but it's only limited to the, like the 12 or 15 or so garages that are owned by, by individual owners. And we've, we've actually developed a pretty good relationship with them because they are sold out, of course. So anytime people call them for uh, storage, the owner, which has become a friend of mine, just refers them automatically over to oh, us. Perfect. So it's actually it's actually <laughs> yeah. been complimentary to us to have them here. Um, there is a couple other newer places that popped up recently, but I don't really, based on what I've seen and heard, they, they don't really compare in class to us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. I love what you do. I love the whole concept of it. How many vehicles can you store in your facility? Uh, another good question. We, we're in what we call phase one of our storage plan. Phase one is I could do about 50 cars on the ground. Mm-hmm. Beginning of January 2021, I intend to invest in 10 triple stackers. Ah, yeah. We're going vertical next year. It will add additional 20 cars because obviously you have the 10 cars on the ground for that are currently there. Yeah. And then we're going to go, we'll add two more levels after that. So we'll add additional 20 cars there. So we'll be up to 70. And then 
you know, if all goes well and that, that books out pretty quick, I will do another round of 10 stackers on the other side. Oh, absolutely. What's your, what's your clear height in that space? Uh, at the peak, we got uh, 30 feet, um, okay. but it's, you know, uh, it, it, on the ends, it, it tapers down to about 25. So yeah. to have a nice uniform look, we, we can, we're going to go triple. I, and in the center, I could do, I could do qu- uh, four cars high, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm highly attentive to the details. So I like to keep things universal and clean. So I just decided to go trip all the way across. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Utilize that high space that you've got in that warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of airspace up there that you could use for something. You know, I always like to ask my guests about a big challenge they faced in their life or their career. And this is really about how you dealt with it and then how you turn that Mm -hmm. somewhat negative situation into a positive. So take us on a little journey that you'd like to share and tell us how that specific experience helped you gain even more momentum as you came out on the other side in a positive way. Hmm. Good question. I, I don't know if I, I mean, maybe not getting too much into detail, but I did have a, a, a situation where, you know, first of all, starting a business is challenging oh, uh, yeah. for anybody, whether you're new to it or, or experienced at it, anything that's new is, is a challenge. And I, I've learned from the beginning, based on experience, that having the right team and working with the right people is absolutely essential for success. There's nothing worse than having clashing of mindsets, personalities. It's never been um, good for business. And it's especially uh, harmful uh, to a business that's in its infancy. I, I did have early on a, uh, a partnership in a, in a, in a similar um, in a business, and and this is where I learned that having partners it could be good thing, also ben- uh, it could also be bad if you don't do your due diligence and understand your partners and their personalities and what their expectations are ahead of time. It could be a killer for sure. Yeah. If you could go back and do that again. And knowing now what you know, what are some of the ways that you would do this uh, quote unquote due diligence? Because a lot of people out there, they get this idea, let's start something, it's with a friend or someone else, and they both have a different perspective going into it than what the outcome sometimes tends to be. And it's only because they didn't do this due diligence. What are some of the ways you would advise people to be careful, tread lightly, and prepare well? Yeah, it's a great question. This is key because the first thing is you know, you got to evaluate your partners carefully, um, establish terms ahead of time, guidelines, roles, responsibilities. All these things should be set up front. Um, be precise and prepared always. You know, before you actually go out and set up this partnership, you need to have meetings face to face or nowadays Zoom and, and set these um, goals, these roles, and, and, and put them in writing. And, and then have somebody, uh, you know, most likely it's not, you know, unless you're an attorney, h- hire an attorney. You know, legal Zoom's great, but you really need somebody that, that can actually work with you side by side to help you put these roles, these guidelines, these responsibilities in writing into an agreement that you actually all as partners and members of you know, your corporation or LLC um, sign and agree to ahead of time. That way, when you when you do have these um, circumstances that come up, you, you have something to fall back on as a guideline to help you weather through those issues. Ah, Incredibly smart advice. And yeah, for any of you out there starting something new, do not scrimp on the legal side. Spend some money with somebody who knows what they're doing and make sure that each of you signing that knows what they're signing and they understand. I always tell people contracts written by someone else are written for them, not for you. So you need to make exactly. sure you hire the con- you hire the the legal counsel, have them write the contract for you, and make sure that everybody understands what that says. Because there may be a breakup period or sometime when you both go opposite ways, and you both need to know what that exit strategy is. Well, great advice there, Kevin. Awesome. Let's take a short break and thank our sponsors. We come back. I want to dive into your personal passion for cars. I mentioned at the beginning, uh, was Kevin a car guy before he was a building guy, or a building guy before he was a car guy? Maybe both. <laughs> So we'll be right back. Sit tight. I found a new way to protect my vehicle. American Collectors Insurance. That's who now protects my Porsche Turbo, the one I call my orange crush. But did you know they also insure your valuable collectibles of automobilia and automotive collectibles? If you're like me, you've invested in a lot of cool automotive collectibles over the years. Those items are valuable. And if you were to lose them in a theft or a fire, well, try to get your normal homeowner's insurance to pay you what they're worth. Good luck with that. American Collectors Insurance provides you with assurance and confidence that your collectibles 
are fully covered. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting us automotive enthusiasts since 1976. They provided me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a history of taking care of their clients. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love. I did. American Collectors Insurance, classic car and collectible insurance designed by collectors for collectors, just like you and me. Let's take a pit stop from the conversation and talk about my charity of choice here at Cars Yeah, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like-minded nonprofits working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through auto-related events, car shows, and drives. One of those nonprofits is very near and dear to my heart because it's right down the road from the Cars Yeah headquarters. It's the LeMay America's Car Museum in Tacoma, Washington. One of the world's truly great automobile collections and one of those must-see bucket list destinations for car people like you and me. If you haven't seen it, I hope you make a trip soon, and if you have seen it, it's probably time to visit again. To learn more about this fantastic museum, go to www.americascarmuseum.org, and while you're there, you can donate to help them keep their engines running. That's www.americascarmuseum.org. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must-read. Whether you dream of owning a collector car, maybe you have two, or maybe you've got 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Here's a couple deals I have for you just for listening here on Cars Yeah!, if you use the checkout code Cars Yeah, you'll receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription at Sports Car Market. That's an exclusive offer from Cars Yeah. And guess what? Here's another deal. If you'd like to get the actual magazine, use the code BSH for buy, sell, hold. That's code BSH. And you'll get $10 off your annual print subscription. That's right, $10 off. Both of these are exclusive offers here at Cars Yeah for Sports Car Market Magazine. Just go to sportscarmarket.com and get your deals today. All right, Kevin, we are back. So I want you to share a story with me that instigated this passion that you have for cars, that pivotal moment in your life when you realized that you were indeed a car guy. <laughs> Great. Yeah, you know, it's a tough question because as a as a baby, a kid, uh, you know, I've been talking to my parents, I was always a car guy. I was always into hot wheels and, and cars and, and love playing with cars. But at the same time, I was uh, a curious kid with taking things apart, trying to fix them. You know, my parents would take me to garage sales as a very young kid and they would buy me broken things. Like they bought me <laughs> at one point a, to- a, a toaster yeah. and, I, and, and, and I would take it apart and try and fix it. And so I, I, it's hard to say what became first, but it's almost like the two are together at the same time. Yeah. But in, in, in business, I was a, I guess I would say I was a car guy before a builder because I would wash cars. So instead of watching the Super Bowl or the World Series, my parents would always have these large parties. My, my dad was it's heavily into sports and they would have 30 to 40 people at the house. And I would, instead of watching the game, I'd be outside washing everybody's cars. <laughs> nice. So I, I would, I'd clear like 10 to 15 cars on a Sunday on a Super Bowl at, at, you know, 10 to 12 years old, making 10 bucks a car, which is a lot of money at that time. Oh yeah. But you know, making a hundred bucks on a Sunday was like, was great. And, but as I got older, you know, I was able to buy my first truck at 16. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> And, and a lot of that came from washing cars and saving yeah, money and, sure. and doing whatever I could do to make money. I always wanted to make money. Yeah. So um, I bought a brand new truck at 16. It was a Ford F-150 um, stick shift V6, you know, bottom of the barrel F-150 when they first came out. And I wanted to customize it, but I couldn't afford to pay someone to do it. So I actually went out and, and got hired by a local 
customized company called Pacific Coast Motoring, which is located on Ventura Boulevard. And I got hired to sweep the floor and I would sweep the floor. And at the same time, I would learn from the guys in the back who were, you know, doing audio, video, wheels, tires. Um, they, we did, we did a lot of cars for the Lakers back then okay. and, and other, and, and skateboarding guys. And, um, so we did some pretty cool stuff. So I, I, I seized that opportunity, uh, would work after hours and, and take my car apart and, and fix it up. And I eventually built that car out over the course of a couple of years to a, where it became actually a, a car on display at SEMA. Wow. Yeah. Went to some magazines, um, had some pretty girls laying all over it, taking pictures. It, it was, it was a cool, cool time in my life. So that, that was like probably my biggest, most memorable car experience as a young, uh, young guy. But, you know, eventually I had to go out in the real world and make some real money and started my construction business uh, yeah. a few years later. Well, that's pretty darn cool. I think that's great. Very uh, ambitious, industrious young man you were. That's pretty neat. <laughs> and uh, leveraging a lot of uh, uh, unique situations. Your parents having parties? Well, there's a whole bunch of cars out there that are dirty that need cleaning. Yeah. Uh, I see money in front of me. So and the fact that you bought your first vehicle at 16, that's pretty special too, especially a new car. That's amazing. Was that yeah. your first really special vehicle in your life? Or is there another one that really stands out that you saved up for and you purchased? Yeah, I mean, I think the F-150 is is obviously very special to me. It's my first real car. You kind of never forget your first car, yeah. they say. You know, it's, I'm, I'm 38 today, and I and I still remember that car. I would love to have it back. But I would say my very first high-end cool car was I um, back in 2005, 2006. I, I bought the uh, Porsche Cayman S when they first came out, and that was my first experience in a high-end car that went fast. It was cool. That I, I think I'll, I'll I always remember that car as well. So oh, I, I think yeah. I have two very special cars. Yeah, I'm a big Porsche fan, as my listeners know, and I've I've really seriously thought about getting a Cayman. I've had lots of 911s, but I drove that Cayman when it first came out uh, on a racetrack. Porsche I had a week. Uh, it was actually a weekday. I think I played hooky from work and went out and drove that. Mm -hmm. And I've always had that in my <laughs> mind ever since. And I just love the way they look. And the, the new Porsche 911s now are so big. I have an older, an 88 Turbo. But the new cars are so big. and You know, they've just gotten huge. Mm -hmm. And the Cayman still has that nice, compact silhouette. It's just an awesome car. So, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that back yes. into my skull, Kevin. Now it's going to eat me all afternoon. Yeah, Cayman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or a GT4. Yeah, we, we, actually got, we actually have a Cayman. We have a Cayman R here. Uh, we have a customer who stores a Cayman R, oh, and it's nice. a beautiful car. Oh yeah! So I, I I still get to see my, I still get to see that car every day. <laughs> well, there you go. They're certainly fun. I'm going to get in your head a little bit here, Kevin. If you woke up tomorrow and you were manifest as a vehicle, this isn't what you want to be. This is how you perceive your attributes as a human manifest into a vehicle. What would Kevin be, and why? Hmm. Wow. It's a good. Uh, take some thought there, but <laughs> no one's ever asked uh, you that before, have they? <laughs> No, so if I if I could come back as a car, I'd say I'd come back as a Ferrari FF. Oh, okay. And why is why that one in that model? Uh, good question. Well, first of all, they're beautiful cars, in my opinion. Uh, the styling of it's beautiful, but it's a fast paced car. It's family oriented. It could sit four passengers. It has no compromises. Uh, it's a little over the top in some ways. So those are those are kind of some things that uh, you know contribute to to, my, to me and my personality. Other than that, I mean, the, nobody else uh, has an all-wheeled front mid-engine V12 2 plus 2 coupe that I can think of. Yeah. And <laughs> it's essentially a station wagon, really, when you look at that. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, luckily for me, uh, I don't own it yet, but I do wish to own it. And, and uh, you know, depreciation has done a number on those things. So I, oh, I, yeah. they're getting to a point where I think I can jump in one of these days pretty soon and, and actually own that car, but not yet. We'll see. Well, I've got a few friends that have those and they love them. I'll tell you, I was at the Ferrari factory when those cars were just about to come out and I was on a tour on the production line and there were three of them sitting there. I'd never seen one in person. And the guy giving us a, a private tour said, would you like to go over and look at the new FF? And, you know, the car is a little funky looking when I first saw it. It's like, oh, this is mm -hmm. different. And the engineers were standing there and they actually talked to us about it. It was a really fun opportunity and i gained a lot of respect for the vehicle right there listening to the designers and engineers talk about why they did and they let us ask them some questions they probably thought maybe you know we were going to buy one or so 
they were just such a unique car and so different. And again, the people I know who've had them really love them. And you're right, they're they're user friendly, if you will. And the great thing about Ferraris, a lot of people don't know this. I have a local friend up here who has a car that's got almost 100,000 miles on it. Ferraris come with a seven year all expense paid warranty. It's because I think wow. most people don't drive Ferraris. Now, those are new Ferraris, of course. And so mm-hmm. he's had this car for years, put almost 100,000 miles and spent nothing on maintenance. Wow. It's incredible. That's, yeah. That is incredible. Yeah. He drives it in the rain, snow. I mean, good kudos to him. Uh, he has a lot of fun with his car, as cars should be. Well, Kevin, we're earning what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off some kind of lightning round questions, get some quick answers from you. So here we go. What's one of your personal habits that you believe has contributed to your many successes in life? Ooh, obsessive compulsive tendency, but most likely. <laughs> yeah, it sounds I'm, like those three words again we talked about at the beginning of yeah, our yeah. discussion. I'm highly organized. I like to keep things clean. I have a super high attention to detail. I take care of my stuff in regard to work, life, and cars. Yeah. You know, so there you go. That's probably, yeah. Yeah, those are winning combinations. Now, if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? I'm going to get in trouble with my wife for this one, but <laughs> Supercar Blondie. Uh, yeah. I met her on the lawn uh, at Pebble. Uh, she said she'd be a guest on this show. I've not gotten her on here yet. She's hard to uh, track down, but I'll get her one of these days. Uh, interesting lady and interesting niche, if you will, that she's created with her YouTube channel and the uh, incredible cars that she's all around all the time. Now, let me ask you this. If you could sit down with her, what's one question you would ask her? Yeah, it'd be interesting to hearing like her personal experiences, you know, you know, with, with unique cars and her journey into the prominence of, in, of automotive uh, vlogging. Yeah, uh, I mean, she's she's really just changed the game, I, I think. And she's a woman, and uh, which is awesome and incredible. And you know, it's great to see um, her, her on top of the world right now. I mean, she's re- I think she's really enjoying herself. Uh, she's it seems to me, you know, she gets to you know, touch, feel, drive, you know, these cars that people aspire, um, to drive. And, um, she gets like firsthand on, you know, experience at this stuff, which is really cool. It's amazing what the social media, YouTube vlogging has done for so many people created whole careers and businesses around their passion. I think it's great. How about when it comes to automotive advice, has someone else ever offered you something you found really valuable? Yeah, this is, Probably a lot of people know this, but, you know, I guess for those guys who are first in the cars, don't ever buy a car as an investment. You know, you always want to buy them yeah. to enjoy them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unless you're in the business. Uh, yeah, that's not the place to go. I've heard this from so many people. Buy a car you love because if things go ups and down in the economy and you're stuck with it or you don't want to mm-hmm. sell it for a loss, at least you'll like it and you can enjoy yes. it. Absolutely. Great advice. Now, how about a resource? Is there a go-to for you? Uh, Something that maybe you find yourself going to a lot could be a website you visit a lot in the world of cars, could be an app, could even be a person in your life. I tend to spend a lot of time on on bring a trailer, believe it or not. Um, You know, eBay is a place that I spend a lot of time in. And you know, at the same time, I mean, we I spent a lot of time working on my own personal uh, website, trying to build that up and trying to make that cool for people as well what is that website it's www.bearautomotivegroup.com all right cool i'll make sure i put a link to that on kevin show notes page in the cars yeah website so you can check it out cool website by the way now is there a book that you've read that you want to share with our listeners you found really valuable yeah i, I don't read a lot of books but when i was growing up and, and going through college and starting my, you know just in the early years of my business I, I read a book called rich dad poor dad by robert kiyosaki yep I think it's a great book, particularly for young guys. It uh, lays out advice uh, and takes multiple perspectives that are you know, eye-opening. Um, like I said, I really don't read a lot, but this is one that I, I, I suggest for, for any young business entrepreneur. Yeah, I read that book myself. It's really a great guideline for how to think differently about money. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. yeah. our, our education system, I never understood this, does not teach kids Junior high should be taught about money. High school should be taught about money. And unless you take specific economic courses, and even, I don't even know if there's investment courses in colleges, uh, they just don't teach us about one of the most important things in our lives. Uh, It always has baffled me. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad, yeah, it's a great book. Uh, One of those. Robert uh, also has YouTube channels and all sorts of things uh, that he offers. Uh, It's the same with a guy, David Ramsey, who is a great guide for how to be smarter with your money. 
and not waste your money. And uh, you don't do things like Kevin told us not to do, buy cars as investments, <laughs> because they're typically not. <laughs> so uh, they're depreciating yeah. assets. Real estate, on the other hand, could be a great investment for sure. Correct. You'll find all these links on Kevin's show notes page on the Cars yeah website. Just check it out. Kevin Barrett, B-A-R-R-E-T-T is how you spell his last name. All right, Kevin, we're up to the checkered flag here. This last question will be about a, a, but, a, a bunch of, a bit of a doozy. I'm going to buy you a very cool collector car today. Something fun to park in your garage and enjoy. It might be that Ferrari FF or it could be something different. But there's a couple rules to the game that my listeners know about. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of other cars with or fund your uh, investment uh, in real estate. Uh, You have to drive it. I want it to tick a lot of boxes so you'll get out there and have some fun up and down the Coast Highway or the hillsides north of Los Angeles. But it's the only one cool car you can have. So you need to be very careful which car you choose for me to buy you. So what is it going to be? Well, you better bring your checkbook out because Uh I'm going for Uh (laughs) I'm I'm going. I'm going Pagani hire a Pagani. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I've actually been able to get a ride in one of those and sit in one of those. I didn't get to drive it. Holy cow. Yeah. You're an expensive guy, uh, Kevin. <laughs> expensive taste from Ferrari FFs up to the Pagani Huayra. Now, you know, these kinds of cars are interesting to me because they're absolutely insane, but they're what uh, Bruce Canapa told me once one hour of cars because when you get in them and drive them after about an hour you realize they're they're kind of a silly car but i guess for a fun car to have in your garage have you ever been able to drive one or go for a ride in one i have not actually been on a ride in one i've, I've sat inside one and got close up to it at a, yeah. a, at a exotics on broadway um in last year mm-hmm. um but no i, I just but just the, the, the they're stunning you know 100 percent handcrafted they're uh, crazy details on the inside and outside and I, I just could stare at it for hours and uh, would love to have one sitting here in my facility. Well, um, no kidding. Yeah. yeah, I think that'd be kind of cool. You know, I had uh, Pagani's uh, son, Christopher, as a guest on the show here uh, in 2019. And I got to meet him at the Quail show in 2019. And he gave me a walk around the car and and uh, told me all about the car. And of course, on the show, you can go back and find him on the Cars yeah website about he's uh, what his dad has done and what they've done. I mean, it's just a stunning vehicle. Every little tiny, it's like a jewelry, piece of jewelry. I mean, every little tiny it really thing is. Yeah, is thought through. So now I want to make sure I get you the right one, since I know my friends at Pagani. What color would you like yours to be? Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I, I love black on black cars, but I think on that car, I just, I, I've seen it in blue. Yeah. And, I, and it just yeah. was remarkable in, 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 a, in this really beautiful blue color. Actually, it's funny because the Ferrari 812 Superfast came out with this blue color this past year. And it's and I would love to have that for that blue on that Pagani if I could. I can um, do that I don't for know. you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, you're paying for it. So. I've got connections. Don't worry about it. Big, <laughs> yeah. big checkbook here, Cars. Yeah, so. Yeah. We'll, uh, I don't remember the name of the blue, but it, it was it's unremarkable. It's a beautiful color on the Ferrari F. Um, sorry, 812. I think the Bagani has to be some kind of a cool color. Black just doesn't quite cut it. White doesn't quite cut it. It's got to be something different and a little bit out there because that car has so many angles and and crisp lines that show off color so well. So, uh, yeah, okay, we'll get to work on that for you. That sounds pretty cool. (laughs) Kevin, you have taken me on a fun ride today. I really want to do a shout-out. Thank you to Tyler Clemenson at Con Media, the friends at Con Media. They send me so many great guests here, and I'm so happy they introduced me to you, Kevin. They're always doing a great job there. Before I let you go, though, could you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off down the coast highway in that Pagani? Yes. Uh, I think, you know, you got to set goals for yourself. And, and when you set these goals, you, you never give up. I mean, it's going to be hard to achieve these goals. Nothing comes easy. Uh, you got to keep going through life's obstacles and hurdles. That's something that over time, as you as you mature and, and go things, you'll figure out how, how to overcome them and, and make decisions that help you get to the next goal and, and beat that goal and get to the next goal and beat that goal. So I've never been satisfied with you know hitting one mark i always try to go to the next mark and beyond yeah absolutely great advice hey what's again the best way for people to keep up with you and follow along with you and what you're doing oh uh, yeah thank you i appreciate that um you can follow us on instagram at fair automotive group or uh, like i said earlier you can follow check our website out at www.fairautomotivegroup.com 
Uh, we're on Facebook, and you can also um, reach us by e- uh, email, mm-hmm. uh, hello at barrettautomotivegroup.com. All right, great. I'll put all those links on Kevin Shono's page. Hey, go and check out what he's doing. Go to the website. Take a look at that. If you live in that area and you need a place to store a vehicle, I think this is, you found a good place, a good home. And once we're all out of lockdown here and we can enjoy our lives again, uh, there's going to be great parties, I think, at this facility where people who love cars can all come together and have a great time talking about cars and their lives. Kevin, uh, thanks for being so generous today with your time and your expertise and for spending a little time with us here on Cars Yeah. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah website at carsyeah.com. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.